All right, we're back for the second round with our black-white deck. We had the mold six, but we've got a two drop and an infernal scarring. A couple two drops actually, so. I think I'm gonna lead with the rune servitor because I'm planning to most likely infernal scarring on it. So we get a little more value out of it if it dies in combat. Looks like we've got another black-white deck. Alright, so I'm not going to go for my aura while he has mana open. I'm just going to play my other 2 drop here. Gain 2 life. And pass. Oh, I guess I should fix this for you guys so you guys can see the cards I'm talking about. Got an Esper deck. Okay, so I'm a little uh, hesitant to go for an aura when he has mana open. I don't know what sort of tricks there are in this format, but I'm worried about something just getting him a bunch of value if I if I do that and he has a trick, so I'm just gonna not do anything here. As long as he's not developing his board. Artificer's Epiphany is fine. Just draw two and discard one. Discards Jesse and Thief, alright. Taps out for Tower Geist. It's a pretty good card, especially in this board state. I'd love to draw land here, which we do. So we have two five drops we can't cast at the moment. I'm just gonna put Infernal Scarring on both of my guys. So these both become four twos. And we'll attack. Okay. So I'll draw a card and pass. I feel like this card is gonna be really underrated at the beginning of the format, but I actually think it's quite strong. It puts a lot of power onto the board, puts a lot of pressure on your opponent. Flushbag Marauder is fine. So I get to draw two cards. It's a sigiled starfish, which is pretty good. I'm actually just going to destroy that right away, though, with the guilt leaf winnower. We'll play a land. And we'll play a winnower. And then soon after, we'll be able to play another 4 4 evasive guy. So I think we're still in really good shape here. Looks like my opponent is some sort of blue-black deck, possibly splashing white. See what is going on in the next couple games. Unholy Hunger. So he's going to get to destroy my guy and gain two life. It's pretty good. Or maybe he didn't have a... Yeah, he didn't have a... What's it called yet? Spell Mastery. So we drew a two drop. So I think my best plan of attack is actually to just play all of my creatures. Because I have six mana and three two drops to cast. Console's Lieutenant. And Shambling Ghoul. He has a bunch of cards in hand though, so even though we are pretty far ahead here. We want to sort of try to close it out before he can stabilize. 
because if he has enough time to cast everything in his hand, he's going to be able to uh, to claw his way back into it. Like if he plays a three toughness guy here, it might be kind of tough to get our guys through. Evolving Wilds gets a swamp. Another tower geist. Okay. There's one more mana. Okay. So he takes a card. Puts all Hummeret in the graveyard. That's very interesting. It means whatever he took has to be better than the giant sphinx here. So that's something. Um, guess I'll just start by attacking. Oh, he's sent to sleeping. That's probably what he got. Now he does have spell mastery, so uh, they don't untap next turn. I will still attack with my cleric. Offer the trade. That's fine. Now we'll play a 4 4 flyer. Would have been nice if we had connected with our renowned guy first, so we get an extra counter, but what are you gonna do? Alright, here's a meteorite. It's gonna deal two to my console's lieutenant. Let's draw something good. Throwing knife, that's not bad actually. Uh so let's Cast throwing knife. He concedes. All right. So let's go to game two. See if I want to sideboard any differently. Um. So he looks like a pretty heavy removal deck with a bomb or two. What do I want to do about that? Possibly dark dabbling. It's good against sorcery speed removal, like uh, his meteorite and that kind of thing. Languish doesn't seem good in this matchup. Macabre Waltz could actually be pretty good. I'm going to try that, actually. 